Thank you. Thank you for staying. Um, one does not make a movie by oneself. Um, I had hundreds of people help me make this. Uh, hundreds of people went on this mad journey with me. I'm, I'm totally humbled by their dedication and forever in debt for their contributions. Um, I once made a short film entirely by myself. Uh, I wasn't in it, but I shot it, edited it, color corrected it to the music. It's a fucking terrible idea. Don't ever do that. <laughs> um, so we're blessed with many of the people that worked on this movie. A lot of our cast and crew are here. It's sort of an embarrassment of riches. It sort of borders on the absurd. Um, there's like over 50 people here. So I can't bring everyone on stage. Um, I, don't, I can't do that. But um, I'm going to introduce everyone um, that I can. And please hold your applause to the very end, otherwise we'll be here all night. Um, uh, as I said, though it says a film by uh, there, don't believe, don't believe what you read, kids. Um, I had many, many collaborators. All right, so um, the first person that I'm going to bring up, um, the, person, the, the first person other than my friends and family that I gave the script to, the person that's been there from the very beginning for me, who fought for me to help to actualize the story, whose contribution to this film cannot be overstated, my creative partner in this entire endeavor is my producer, Lynette Howell Taylor. Yes, hold your applause. Okay. Um, then the next person, um, if there's a more supportive uh, and filmmaker friendly uh, financier producer out there than Shivani Ruwat of Shivan's Pictures, um, I, uh, I'd be amazed. Um, I was truly blessed, blessed to have found this endlessly supportive person, Shivani Rawat. She literally, and yes, I'm using that word correctly, I think in this context, made my dreams come true. So Shivani, please come up. Um, then next I'm going to bring up um, Jamie Patrickoff and Monica Levinson, also producers. Um, So uh, the cast is here, some of them, not all of them. Uh, some people are doing plays. Um, Steve Zahn, who's not here, uh, decided to go home and see his family. I don't know what the fuck that's about. He, he, he's been shooting nonstop for six months, and it was either sh coming here for 24 hours or going to see his family, and he made the right choice. So he's not here. But I'm going to start bringing people up. Trin Miller, who plays Leslie. Trin, are you here? Um, Louise Hobson, are you here? Louise? Uh, Teddy Van E. Missy Pyle, <laughs> Catherine Hahn, Aaron Moriarty, um, and then the, the central family is uh, Charlie Shotwell, who played Ryan, Shree Crooks, who played Zaja, Nicholas, Nicholas, Nicholas Hamilton, sorry, who played Rellian. Annalise Basso, who played Vesper, Samantha Isler, who played uh, Kira, and George McKay, who played Bodeman. And lastly, um, this man needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him. Uh, a director has many, many, many collaborators um, before, during, and after. Uh, during, uh, Stéphane Fontaine, who is uh, my DP, who's not here. He shot uh, Un Prophet, uh, A Prophet, this incredible French movie, and also Rustin Bone, he's a master, he can't be here. He was um, my right-hand person. Uh, later, it was Joe Krings, the editor, but certainly the entire process um, was Viggo Mortensen. Don't, don't say that again. Um, uh, you know, I, I, this was a really hard part to cast, as you can imagine, you need someone who's believable, physically, intellectually. Um, I gave Vigo a bunch of books to read when, I, when we first started talking, and he's like, yeah, I, I read all those. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, everything I mentioned, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, and he said a couple things while we were doing it, I was like, wow, fuck, he knows more than I do about it. <laughs> um, and anyway, Vigo is an extraordinary artist, a painter, poet, actor, photographer. I think he's a true Renaissance man, and I am absolutely honored. The entire thing has been such an honor to collaborate with him. Viggo Mortensen.
I'm, I'm going to quickly run through a couple of people. There's a lot of people here, and um, that's all I'm going to bring up on stage. But I'm, I'm going to thank um, co-producers Louise Runge, Samantha Hausman, and Crystal Powell. Uh, exec producers Declan Baldwin and David Mankind. Mankind. Uh, uh, I have to do a little parenthetical here. My second wife and therapist, uh, the man who literally lived with me um, in the same apartment for months on end, and who really has had as much to do with making this movie as anyone, the ever-patient editor, Joe Krings. Yes. Uh, Russell Barnes, production designer, is here. Alex Summers, composer. Chris Doritas, music supervisor. Gene McCarthy, casting director. Leo Moreno, and everyone a local hero. Connor Flanagan, Derek Iger, and, and David Gaddy. If I've missed you, I apologize. Um, there are a lot more people. Um, in fact, all of you worked on the movie, and that's why you're so enthusiastic. All right. Thank you for your indulgence. That's it. Yes. Should we take some questions? How about up in the in the gallery up there? Anybody? All right. Then you, sir. <laughs> Can everyone hear? The question was how we settled on Sweet Child of Mine and, and how many other um, songs we cycled through. That was a nightmare. Um, uh, actually, okay. Uh, I was going to be honest. Yes. Um, okay. So uh, in the script, um, the, the family played a lot of Prince. Um, who I love, and um, they, in the beginning, um, that, that uh, musical number around the fire was a Prince song, and then later they play Prince, and I thought Leslie would like Prince, and I like Prince, and um, that didn't work out for us, and we went through a lot of other things, and um, uh, at the very last moment, the two songs we're, we're working with was that one, and Like a Prayer by Madonna, because I just thought like age-wise, but ultimately, it, you know, it, it happened this way. This crazy question for you. Okay. Did you write this with Vigo in mind? Because it sure does feel like it. <laughs> and how was it? Yeah, answer that and let's ask Vigo. Uh, when, I, when I wrote it, I know, I kind of had a. Um, I think I had like. I didn't have anyone in mind. I think vaguely I had Harrison Ford in the day. Like, you know, like when he was, you know, 40. You know? Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I, that's not an insult to him, he's an amazing actor, but I, th I didn't really think, like, I, he obviously wasn't going to play the part, I just, I didn't, I didn't really think about it, and then when it came time to casting, I was like, well, who's going to play this part? We have to, you know, and I, the first person I thought of was Vigo, absolutely, it was Vigo. Um, I just, you know, I, I, it was a writing sample, I, I showed it to some people as we were trying to raise money, and um, I think Hollywood's perception of what it should have been was, was very different from mine, and not Hollywood, but, you know, the people I met, um, in Los Angeles, and um, I, <laughs> I was, I, I had, I, for me it was Vigo. There was never, it was always Vigo. I mean, you know, come on. Vigo, did it feel like your part as soon as you read it? Um, there were a lot of things that I <clears throat> understood, and, you know, especially about the way their lives uh, were at the beginning, you know, being in the woods, all those things. There were a lot of things, and I, I loved it. It was one of the best scripts I'd ever read. I mean, it was, what you see is, is pretty close to what I read uh, the first time. And I knew I was right for it, but I was afraid of it somehow, and, and, and I don't know. And also, there was a lot of things going on, still are, with my family, health things, and I just didn't feel, I don't know, I just didn't feel like I could uh, do it at the time. It took me a while to, to jump in, and uh, I, I would like to thank Matt and Lynette uh, for their patience and waiting for me because some time passed and I think there were some other thoughts. They, it, 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 Matt was very stubborn about it, which I'll, I'm forever going to be grateful to him for. And, and I have to say that my uh, representatives, uh, uh, Jenny Rollins and, and Lynn Rollins, also uh, they believed in this as, uh, you know, as much as I do now. <laughs> But uh, I know it was good, but sometimes there are the things that you, you know you could do. There's no reason not to do it, other than practical, you know, family matters, all that. But there's something that keeps you from doing it. In other words, you're afraid of it. And as a general, and I keep forgetting this, those are the things that I always remember fondly, because 
those are the things you have to go after. The things that, you know, uh, I think it was Mike Nichols that said, the, s the safest thing you can do is take a chance. You know, and that's movies, life, everything. So, thank you, thank you. No, thank you. Back there, sir, or madam, I can't see. Jeannie, stand up. Jeannie, Jeannie McCarthy. Stand up, stand up, Jeannie. Yeah. Uh, don't work with children or animals. Uh, we have both. Uh, uh, casting. Um, I always believed that we'd find the kids. I really did. I, I just thought they're out there. And it was just, a, it just took time and patience. And um, we did a pretty rigorous audition process. We saw kids from every English speaking country in the world, I think, maybe not all. You know, George is from England and um, Nick is from Australia. Um, we saw people from everywhere, New Zealand, Canada. Um, and it just took time, you know, it just took time. And we, we had a long audition process and then a callback process and we had them you know, special skills. Yeah, and they, you know, they, the, the hardest thing was making the leap of faith because, you know, you need kids that looked physically active, that were strong physically, that could say the, the language and sound like they knew what they were talking about, that could play instruments, that, you know, there's all these requirements and it's a tall order. Um, and I personally just ultimately cast the kids that I thought were the best actors for the part and thought hopefully we can fake the other stuff. You know, there's some kids who are amazing gymnasts and could do amazing things, but I just thought, you know, for me, all most great film moments are, are acting moments, are, you know, human moments that move me, and, and I needed that from them, so, yeah. That being said, none of, none of the stuff is fake. It is Sammy that's singing, true, George, singing, George, I mean, everyone plays a guitar, yeah, plays Bellion instrument. plays, that's I mean, it's all, it's all real. Fake, yeah, that's right, that's true. Over there, please, yeah. What inspired you to write the film? Was it your parenting experiences, your childhood experiences? Uh, it's not autobiographical, um, but I did live on a bunch of hippie communes as a kid in um, uh, Northern California and Oregon. My mom started one. I lived in a teepee. We used to sleep in the teepee all summer. and. Uh, she would, we had chores, like chopping wood in the rain for hours at, at a time. Uh, I, there was no technology, no TV, so, so, so some things are, but my mom is not Vigo, it's, she's a different person, and it, for me, really, the inspiration in the, was not autobiographical, but aspirational. I have two kids who are here, my wife and kids are here, Dash and, and um, I think really it was just about grappling with being a parent, and and thinking about what kind of father I want to be or hope to be and within the context of the United States, you know, for me the movie is very much about our country and um, and parenting, so it was really just, he's aspirational I think, the man I want to be. Doesn't everyone want to be Viggo Mortensen? I do. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, we did. Um, we did a bunch of training for, like, uh, for the rock climbing, for instance, um, and we went on a sort of survival day or two days and a night where we learned to track. Um, I think the, genuinely the most satisfying thing I've ever done in my life is build a fire from scratch. Um, and we did. We built a tent that we then all slept in together out of sticks and ferns and moss. Um, so yeah, that was a kind of bonding experience as well. Um, but yeah, it's freaking you out listening to him, isn't it? <laughs> Say that again. It's such a freaking out. People are freaking out listening to you. They're like, oh, my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> listen to his yeah. accent. Get really land and. <laughs> but yes, yeah, any everything that was necessary, we just got ready for. Um, is it, uh, we did that. It was like 
two weeks or so, we got there a little early, so we could just do all the training. Not only did we do like rock climbing and the, the survival camp for a day or so, we also did like this bow and arrow lesson and yoga <laughs> classes, but we had a long time to prepare for it. And some of it, like on the mountain scene, we weren't really that high. That was a green <laughs> So some of it wasn't really real, so. It was high enough for me though. It wasn't, I was the biggest chicken shit of everybody, the whole family. Oh, at lunchtime, I'm up there, I'm just holding on. I was like, like uh, the whole day, you know, fear of heights. And uh, high enough. Yeah, you, and, you and George were pretty high. Actually. And then, then everybody's like climbing down. You know, you're coming down watching. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm just stay here. Like, well, you don't want to stay there all day. Go, no, yeah, it's, it's really, it's beautiful. <laughs> it was terrible. But I have to say that, especially when you work with young actors, which I've done several times, I've been lucky almost always, but never like this. Uh, you know, you do, if someone's very young, like you two guys in particular, uh, Charlie and Shree, you know, you do a take, you do two, Maybe, and then, you know, kids naturally tend to get bored or they're focused, so forth. I mean, I've never worked with a team of actors, seriously, on any movie, play, anything that's so committed, so prepared, so on top of it. It was, it was an amazing experience, and the casting that was done by Jeannie and, and Matt, which I was glad to be part of towards the end, a little bit, just as far as reading and trying to help. It was an, that was amazing. And then seeing how everybody worked as a team, and a lot of it's Matt, you know, what he did for us. You know, just because you're an actor, just because you're a really good actor, it doesn't mean you're gonna be a very good director. You have to like actors. There's, there's actors that don't like other actors, they're competitive, whatever. Uh, or they don't pay attention, they just learn their lines, and they don't really pay attention to what happens with different kinds of actors, and every actor is different. And he, I mean, the best directors, in my opinion, they do a great job of casting, hopefully. And then they kind of let you do your thing. And they watch everything. They pay attention to everything. And they can sense almost before you do when you're getting in trouble, you're not sure what's going on. And then they step in. They help you solve problems. That's what it's about. And if, and if they're really great, like Matt, they're not afraid to say, I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's just try it again. Just know, you know, he took, took the pressure off on a shoot where there was quite a bit of pressure because we didn't have endless time to shoot all these things. We had to really move. And uh, he was great. But I mean, the bond that he also inspired by having us there early, by doing all this training, um, that, that was amazing. But it wouldn't happen if we didn't have such an awesome family of actors. I mean, I was so happy watching this movie. All of us together watching this. I mean, I just love this family. I love this family. <laughs> Also, a big part of the preparation for this film is getting to know one another, and it's so rare to form such strong bonds with co-actors, just because, you know, all of these people are so rare. And Charlie wrote a concerto, and yeah, it's true, he, he's, he wrote a Opera. concerto for piano. And Zaja is one of the most unique, most beautiful people that I know, and Nick is like a little brother to me, and we're all just... Just after the film, we just remained so close, and that was really rare. So I, that's my favorite part, is forming think, all these relationships with these wonderful people. I don't think thank you, you could be modified, however. <laughs> <laughs> just, thank just. Yeah. Oh, speaking of training, by the way, Matt made us sign a contract, okay? Because he wanted us to be like our character, so he's like, you won't eat sugar, and you won't be on your phone, whatever. And that's fine, that's okay. Um, but then I, the very first day of rehearsal, I ate a donut, and they made fun of me for it the whole entire three months that we were there. And they would like, when they would like draw pictures of me eating donuts, like Annalise's mom's over there like drawing pictures of like all the cast, cause she's like an artist, and there's me with a donut, and I'm like, no, but it was good. Matt like really wanted us to get into our characters, and the training also included a lot of like books. He gave us all backpacks and books about hunting and tracking and 
Noam Chomsky and Noam Chomsky. There's a book called uh, Corporation by Joel Bakken. Recommend it. <laughs> we just we just we just learned we just learned a lot. And I know the movie like inspired us in a ton of different ways. Like I was talking to George this morning. Like he learned so much like from the movie, and I learned so much. I just the movie motivated me to be smarter because I liked my character in the movie a lot more than I liked myself at the time. <laughs> she and then um, when the movie was over, like and I still think Matt, but just I'm so thankful that he made us like smart. Because people, people don't do that a lot for kids, and people don't trust kids a lot. Like, who, who's going to hire a six-year-old, like, and make them as intelligent as they made Charlie and Shri? And I think that's just incredible. And for me, as, like, an actor, I appreciate that so much, because as a 17-year-old girl, I don't get auditions like this. I don't, like, every once in a while, like, it's very, very rare. So I know this project means a lot to us, because he made us smart, and people don't really make kids smart. <laughs> You also need people who put up the money to make the movie, who, when you have a very special project like this, <clears throat> that respect the way Shivani Rawad did, has done from start to finish, Matt's writing, directing, and his final cup, right to here to Sundance. And that, that's, that's rare, because this is, you know, this is a movie that, it's not gonna be, it's not, it's not gonna, it's gonna offend some people at, at some point. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I'm so glad that you all stayed. It's very rare in a Q&A session uh, to see the whole theater full still. But there's gonna be places where people get up and leave, probably. It's gonna offend their sensibilities. Like you, I see you, you're leaving. No, no, they got to go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. No, this family doesn't want to let you get away with anything. No, but Shivani, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, you guys are all so delicious and charming. Thank you for a beautiful film, beautiful performances, great writing, great producing. Thank you, audience. Thank you.